This is a Swiss designed, assembled in America, micro R press. And in the next 30 minutes, I'll show you how and why I made it. Hi, I'm Bill Ritchie and I'm a printmaking teacher. 10 years ago, uh, 2012, I came up with the idea of uh, making a miniature press. And I made a little tiny press that was modeled after the Rembrandt's press, uh, the press that he used in the, sec in the 17th century. Uh, that miniature press uh, grew and developed and uh, lately, in the year 2021, even shrunk down to an even tinier press made in Switzerland by a friend of mine named Eck Lorry. What I have in front of me is Eck Lorry's press cut on a laser engraver. And that's what this tape is about. Now Eck is actually my print pal. And to me, this is like a game, designing. And part of our game is that he sends me the instructions. So to help me get started, he sent me this book of instructions. The first part is to break out the cut parts. Now that will be fun. If I think of this like a game, pretty soon I realize it has a lot of parts and I better get them organized. When X sent me the laser sheets, all the parts were labeled there. I have punched out all the pieces and I'm putting them in uh, little neat bags like this so that they can be kept according to the labels in the instruction manual. I think the micro R press is ideal for what I call the printmaking teachers in a box. It's a kind of a, a gamified introduction to printmaking for kids and grown-ups. So now we're ready for step number two, which is to take those instructions and uh, cut them apart so that we can put the uh, instructions themselves into the little bags so that they're all in order. I refer to the instructions and it says, next I remove the covering and assemble. That means to take the uh, kind of yellow uh, covering that's, that, that came with the uh, laser cut pieces and peel it off and then use glue to assemble those parts that have to be assembled. Now not every uh, part of this uh, press, this game, need to be assembled. Uh, some of them are freestanding like these side pieces. But uh, I will be peeling off the covering of these pieces that are labeled axle the below axle, there are four of them, and I'll remove the cover. Now I have removed the film from the pieces uh, of the lower axle, and I'm cleaning the soot off the edges as recommended in the instructions but I need to make sure I know where I'm going. What is the lower axle? Well, the lower axle is, uh, refers to the rollers, which uh, are the circles with the square holes in them, and the axle goes in the square holes. So I just wanna make sure that I know where I'm going, so I'm checking the instructions and reviewing, making sure that I have the lower axle and not get it mixed up with the upper axle. So just let's review the pictures now.
before we can put the bottom roller together, we have to take off all the protective covering. Now it appears that the holes in the parts of the roller are square. They're not square, they're rectangular. And so in fitting them to the axle, you'll see that they have to be facing a certain way or they won't fit. It fits. I'm going to start gluing the parts together with the base plate. The base plate comes in three parts. Two are narrow and they sit on top of the other one like this. It's important that they be exactly lined up before the glue dries. I line them up by tamping them like that and then clamp them. I think of this as uh, part of the base plate, call it uh, part A. It's the top part, the narrower part, and these will fit against it and so. Now that the inside pieces are set, I'll glue them to the base, uh, the, the third part of the base plate. And to be sure that the distance is correct, I'll set it up on the side piece, press it down, make sure the ends are even, and clamp them. Double check. Make sure that they're the right distance. In this picture of the first completed micro R press in Switzerland, you can see the base plate. Now we're going to do the top plate. There are five pieces for the top plate. Two, like, the, like it was on the bottom plate, that go inside and then one on top. And then there's a front and a back, which we'll get to later. Now we come to the gluing together of the printing bed plate. But first I want to go over and review what I've already accomplished. Here I've rubber banded the uh, two side pieces and the base plate and the top plate. And I've got the rollers assembled and I'll be putting on the gears pretty soon. Now let's glue together the printing bed plate. Now obviously in order to stay under my one minute limit, I have to speed things up sometimes. The other thing is that at the end of this tape, I don't show that I put it under a weight to keep it flat while the glue is setting. And finally, I only get one chance to put this together. There's no going back. To glue together the turning wheel, you start with the hub. 
and file off uh, any of the ashes and soot that are going to interfere with a proper fit. It's like a rehearsal. Check those swallowtail pieces too, the ones with the notches. Line up the gears, stack the uh, hub together, it's not glued, and check those swallowtail to make sure everything fits nicely against the turning axle. And you're ready to apply the glue. Take it all apart and put a little bit of glue on one face of the hub. Then line it up and put it back on the other. Still making sure they're lined up on the axle and then clamp it. Let the glue dry. There are three pieces to each of the turning wheel arms. Two that are uh, stacked right on top of each other, the same size, and they go inside the notches in the hub. So you glue those two together, but don't glue them to the hub yet. It's a good idea to uh, put a weight on them when they're drying so that the glue sits. Then we go to the swallowtail parts. Those will have a little fork in one end. They go next to the square axles. Again, put some glue on one face and uh, make sure they're all lined up neatly. And it's a good idea to put something heavy and flat while their glue is setting. When I had the arms all glued together, I realized how nice a little object the hub was. So I gave it some sanding to knock off the hard edges, and then I painted the edges to contrast with the color of the natural wood. On my computer, I composed some text that would go around the edge, give credit to the designer, and I cut that circle out and taped it to the hub. And with the tip of a hot iron, I transferred the laser print to the wood of the hub. It transferred very nicely. And then I sealed it. In this case, I used a transparent acrylic sealer. Just as I had with the hub, I decided to uh, finish the arms too before I glued them to the hub. I painted the edges black and then after they were dry, I gave them a clear coat. I find that sometimes the fit is so tight because of the clear coat, so I decided it's a good idea to take off that clear coat. And besides that, it probably makes a better um, gluing surface with the gluing wood to wood instead of wood to clear coat. Now I needed to go back to the instruction manual to see what was next. It's about the print bed plates. That's these little guys here. They go here, but they have to be fitted. And so the instructions say to file off the lower edge. I'm going to tape them together so the work will proceed equally. It fits. Some wax paper will keep my work from sticking to my bench top. We'll let that set and then we'll do the other side.
In my experience printing on miniature presses like this, I find they sometimes you know, move around when you're trying to turn the wheel. Before I glue the, uh, base, the side plates to the base plate, I would drill holes in each end, and then I can screw that down, uh, and it'll hold it steady while I'm printing. Having drilled the holes, I tried it out. I thought, why not use it while I'm making my, while I'm gluing the side plates? I wrapped a rubber band around it to keep it uh, steady while it dried. And I even added a clamp off camera to hold the middle in. I left off on the top plate before I put on the front and the back. So now it's time to glue on the front and the back before I attach it to the side plates. I see I need to make a tiny adjustment. Oh, it fits. Getting all set up for this step, I'm going to be merely uh, gluing in the supports. I haven't glued them together yet. I'm just sort of getting set up. I've got the rollers here for position to help me line them up later on. And I've got the bottom uh, support ready and the top support ready. It's important that they be lined up. And I found a nice little tool to make sure that the round part is lined up. That's the crucial part. It's important that they be lined up, and that's how I did it. Before I glue, I want to make sure these uh, supports fit. Nope, they don't fit, so that means I have to sand them off. All the edges and the curved side on the inside. Now when I try it, it goes right into place. So it'll be ready to glue. The mechanics of the press are such that when the bed goes through, it, it needs to have uh, guides to keep it from, you know, going sideways like that. So next we're going to put in the printing bed plates guide. And I think it's best to put the blackened edges along so they line up with the other black edge.
The bottom rollers have three groups. On the left is the screw, the end cap, the gears, and a flat washer. Then there's the roller itself, and then another washer and another set of gears. I'm going to begin by lining up the teeth and putting a little bit of glue on the inside, making sure they stay in alignment, and clamp them on the edge. Now these have to fit nicely on the ends of the axles, so let's make sure that they line up. And they do. So I'm going to apply a clamp. And now for the other end, make sure they are alignment. Before I continue with the assembly of the bottom roller, I decided to clean up these uh, teeth on this with a little tiny file. The press is designed so that the rollers are removable. So this end will be having a cap screwed on with this screw. The other end is going to be fixed and glued in place along with the washer. The rollers on the press will be removable in case there's any adjustment that needs to be made. They will be held on with the cap. This is the cap. And I will drill a hole in the end of the axle so that I can keep the cap on. I'll find the center, give it a little start, and drill. Here we go. This demonstration shows how the arms turn the top roller and they're geared to the bottom roller. So in this series, I will glue the gears together. Check the alignment. do the fine tuning with the needle file and then I'll place on the washer and the gear and the glue and the turning wheel press it down line it up all done To complete the assembly of the top roller, I'll be drilling a hole in the axle, but I want to be sure that the gear is cleaned up as much as I can so the press will run smoothly. Locate the center. Give it a start. And drill.
To fine tune the rollers and the gears, I start by making sure that the roller runs free without gears. If it doesn't, if it sticks, then I take my sanding tool and go over it again. But it's running smoothly. Do the same for the top. Runs perfectly smoothly. Then it's time to check the gears. It runs pretty smoothly. There's a little jerkiness. When that happens, it's time to get the files again. When you begin to fine tune the gears on one side, take note as to where it's sticky. It's right in there. Now it turns out that if you move the gear one, one tooth, it might make a difference. No, it's still sticky. So try moving them a tooth at a time. That's smoother. It's still one sticky spot. And you can keep doing that tooth by tooth. And it might turn out that there's a sweet spot where all the gears are meshing very nicely. That's much better. Now let's try the other side. Fine tuned in the other sides, we put on its gears, give it a try. Quite smooth. You can experiment with rotating, let's say rotating it 180 degrees to see if it's a better fit. Yeah, it's quite good. Now, if I had to file the teeth at all, we've done this before. And that's as good as it gets. The finishing part is uh, take apart the, the press entirely and apply acrylic. I'm going to use an acrylic uh, transparent coating. And I'm going to treat the edges of the gears to give the teeth more strength. I'm also going to finish the press bed. I'm going to mark the edges and make them all black and uniform. That'll be nice. Um, finishing the caps too before they replace, uh, you know, over the gear, over the gears. And I'm going to uh, put on a mark, uh, a, a credit to the designer, Ek Lori, on the top before I finish that. And maybe I'll write a story and put it on the back of the, the bottom of the press. The story of the Micro R Press really started in 2018 when Eck Lurie bought one of our mini etching presses. And then we started talking about miniaturizing presses for teaching, uh, particularly for kids. And then he, uh, I sent him the specs for the Wee Woody Rembrandt Press, which he cut out on his laser engraver. And then he redesigned uh, that press uh, for a uh, micro R press that he could cut out on his laser engraver and then he sent me the parts that I could put together and that's how it all started and uh, it's going on as I write this as I make this recording it's continuing <laughs>